What's up, everybody? Brett here, back today, casting some more Total War Warhammer 2 multiplayer action. This time it's going to be me playing as the Dwarves versus Cross Pike on the High Elves in the Tomb of the Shifting Sand. So, you can look here, guys. My build is super, super dwarvy. Hold on, let's go ahead and slow mo this. My build is super dwarvy. I've got triple cannons. I've got a front line of dwarf warriors mixed in with the good old, uh, here we go. I got the gremlin guard here, but I've also got long beards mixed in for their encouragement aura. Um, I've got a back field of rangers. I like them for stalk. It lets them get in range of high elf archers. Uh, they're shielded, not necessarily as heavily armored as the corlers, uh, but I think they're a good option just in case I wanted to do some vanguard shenanigans. Um, and yeah, triple cannons, like I said, if he brought dragons, if he bought cavalry, cannons will do great. If not, I'll just turn them on the infantry. And then I've got double Thane here with absolutely nothing brought uh, attached to them. They're 500 gold, they're dirt cheap. And what I use them as in this matchup is little mini roadblocks for uh, chariot units. And I've got one group of miners just back here to protect. And a basic dwarf lord with only one ability. And that is to stand your ground. I just need him to stand his ground. That's it. And then Double Slayer. And that's it for my build. Very basic. This map is not great for cannons. Which is why I didn't deploy, you know, here. Because then my cannons would be shooting up. They'd have a problem depending on what type of build my opponent brought. Um, I'm not exact. I know it looks like I'm super corner camping. I'm not super corner camping. I took the best angle that I could on this hill. And then I'm going to move forward a bit. Um, so that I'm a little bit further away from the white line. Uh, but dwarves, dwarves definitely favor the, the old yield corner camp. Um, and it might have been better to bring grudge throwers uh, on this map because of the terrain. Just because they have that arcing fire instead of the straightforward fire of the cannons. But what I really wanted was to get a line of sight on this kind of like position here. And I'm still not in range. Now this is a, the exact high elf build that I expected. So <laughs> why, why did I choose to, to go grudging? Uh, today on the uh, on the ladder. It's because man I played so many fun builds so many fun unique builds that I was trying to get to work And I just kept running across super tryhards, which n Really honestly nothing against tryhards if you really want to win uh, There are builds that will help you win and if all you're trying to do is get better at winning then Definitely use a lot of the builds that people were bringing against me because they were good solid builds um, I got hellstorm rocket battery to death, which was pretty fun Um <laughs> the game right before this and I was like you know what god dang it I was trying to do some fun stuff with Emmerich and like dragon um, with dragon lances and stuff and it just it wasn't it wasn't working out so I was like you know what back to basics back to the basics let's take a wide dwarf build and see what we could do with that we're going to be up against Alariel the Radiant and all of her healing magic on a horse she's much cheaper than on an eagle you know that leaves you room to bring more spells if you would like um, shield of thorns Earth Blood, Foz Protection, Physical Resistance and an AoE, and then the Star of Avalon. Actually, probably even a few more spells than I would bring. I like the Shield of Safari Life Bloom combo. You get a little bit of heals and a little bit of damage resistance. Front line of White Lions for their massive armor piercing with their sick looking axes. I love these guys. I like them more than most people, I think. Um, and since the reworks, they've gotten a lot better. Also, the Pure Main Company, they've got their Guardian Aura, 15% physical resistance, and they're just straight up good. Uh, they also sunder armor on attack. They're they're a pretty incredible uh, auto include perhaps versus the dwarves. We've got some basic archers here, probably just a pressure. I mean, I don't <clears throat> if they can get close enough to my artillery, they can shut them down pretty quickly. Um, we've got silver helms and Illyrian reavers, perhaps to go up and around. Um, maybe even just to if you know this map, you want to take the top of the hill perhaps as quickly as possible. Having stuff like Illyrian Reaver archers, you can really just Vanguard deploy them up there. Um, and then this is the real the real danger here: the double nobles on the chariots. Um, did they bring any abilities at all? No, no, they did not. So not even any uh, like heroic blow, killing blow, or anything like that for extra armor piercing. They don't really need it. Uh, they're well armored. They're fast. Huge weapon strength with armor piercing. Um, very dangerous versus the dwarves. And then held in reserve. I honestly didn't see them because this. This, um, you see they're hidden there. Their, their line of sight was blocked for me up until they got to about this point. And then I could start to see everything as it kind of crested the hill. So I didn't even see the sword masters at first. My cannon's just going to be ripping shots into the white lines. This was the first thing to step over the line after I had adjusted my formation a little bit, moved a little bit further away from the white line, as you can see. 
and uh, just sort of starting here to readjust my lines to protect myself to cover my uh, my weaknesses there and let's go ahead and uh, get it going gonna be adjusting here we're not gonna for maybe a little bit we're gonna be ripping all of our shots at this one group um, but then we're gonna be switching targets yeah the pyramid company definitely definitely the highest value thing that I can see here the sword masters of Howorth are gonna take a, vac a short vacation on the top of this hill not wanting to get focus fired down by the cannons no doubt they are the most expensive thing I could be shooting at the nobles but what I'm trying to do is just soften up the front line and also I've seen players who are good enough to juke cannon shots on a chariot and I'm trying to avoid that as well and this is what I'm hoping for the mixture of cannon fire plus uh, ranger fire would be enough to really just wreck the front line of the high elves not giving not really giving the dwarf warriors a chance because even at 50 percent the pyramid company is still going to mop the floor with some dwarf warriors um but long beards a chance the grumbling guard we're going to give them a chance love the grumbling guard guys they give a vigor oh my god the direct shot they give a vigor reduction aura and an aoe it used to be quite big but now it kind of sucks we're going to mop up their charge a little bit with the alternating um alternating staggered frontline formation and we're going to switch over the cannon fire we're going to start dunking on the archers we're doing that with the rangers as well the nobles are going to get in but you got into the gremlin guard the gremlin guard do not care they have uh charge defense and that they were able to just stop the noble in his tracks he's gonna he's gonna hurt them but they're gonna hold almost to the last same thing here with the long beards my opponent could not have picked two worst units to charge into and he's gonna go ahead and get a rear charge here a little bit of physical resistance, shield of thorns, not needed. I wasn't targeting them at all. But what I have done, and what my opponent tried to do, is go up and around with a nice flank with the Silver Helms and the Illyrian Reavers. Going to temporarily take my cannons offline while the Slayers chase the Silver Helms off the map. Only nine of them left. And then, you know, the Miners are protecting here. The other Slayers are getting in there. And I'm going to be able to bring in, you know, my backline protection. Now that those, those mobile elements are dead... I'm going to bring in everything I had defending back into the front line. The Thanes are going to be able to mix it up. These White Lions push through onto my Rangers. But I can bring the Miners in plus the Thane. That should be enough at least to handle them temporarily. There we go. We've corralled the Illyrian Reavers. They're going to be running off the map. Their speed there honestly not doing them any favors. I brought this group of Dwarf Warriors up and around to get a flanking attack. I think I actually left them there for a second as I was microing. Getting my cannons back online. You can see I'm bringing them back to their pieces. Uh, and then I'm going to get the rear charge here. I hate it when they go in this like this long skinny formation, but couldn't be helped. I could have taken extra time to micro them into a flat formation to get a better rear charge, but they'll figure it out. My lord is having to stand his ground here versus this noble. I just need him to hold. He's so cheap. He doesn't even have to win, but I'm going to bring this other Thane up. Let's look at the Thane real quick. You got to love these guys. They just look so awesome. And a Dwarf and a Thane are more than enough to do work to this Chariot, that's for sure. And Alario's going to want to get in there at some point and get some, some fighting done. Otherwise, I'm going to take it to this Noble. And the Swordmasters have started to push in, but I have trained all of my, or at least two of my, cannons on to these Swordmasters. The other one, I think, is targeting this White Lion here as it fights my other group of Longbeards. I'm constantly pulling my Rangers back to reposition them. Because these white lines are chewing through my dwarf warriors. Great healing going off from Alario, obviously. And now I, I think I'm spreading around. I think I've got all my cannons on three different targets. Because even though I pushed my front line forward to give my cannons more space to fire, uh, my front line ultimately basically collapsed. And a lot of stuff ended up uh, getting pushed backwards here. The Lord getting back into it. Once again, Rangers falling back, dwarf warriors. Everything is kind of chasing a bit. Not really that concerned about the archers anymore. My long beards, bless their hearts, they're holding even though they're losing. And I've got one Thane supporting here, these dwarf warriors. And the name of the game right now is Slayers, please chase and kill the nobles. Tried to get a like a sideways charge down the line of the rangers, but the momentum was just not enough. And the Slayers were just able to chew him up. This group here, with Foss protection, been getting healing from Alario kind of clipped a few of my own guys oh no that's brutal oh god that's so brutal the slayers say i don't care just shoot me in the back as long as it kills sword masters 
did some damage to Alario, but she's going to be rushing back here to try and shut down these cannons. But the Slayers did their bloody work. The Noble lies dead in the sand. And uh, they're going to get over here and surround Alario. The other group, only 20 Slayers available to chase. But that's more than enough if they can lock it down. Hopefully my cannon doesn't run all the way off the, the battlefield here and I can get it back. The Swordmasters, thanks to the sacrifice of the Slayers. Oh my god, did one of my own... That's a grudging. That's a grudging for sure. One of my own cannon sought to hit this Noble but missed and hit my other cannon crew. I was wondering what was damaging these guys. Uh, I looked over and I was like, wait, they're not coming back? How did they lose so many models? And that must have been what it was. I didn't quite register it at the time. But you can see here, the balance of power has shifted heavily. The nobles are losing their leadership. They're staying in combat. 70, 76 kills is no joke, but I'm shooting them point blank while the slayers hold them in place. We got crossfire going. Some of those, some of those shots are landing, and that's going to be it. At the end there, I was just trying to make sure my rangers were on good targets. This is kind of a lot of white lines that were charging back in. I did not want them to get back in here, and we're going to be able to prevent that. Honestly, not the most impressive win. Um... Uh, Whenever you, whenever you take a lot of artillery and a lot of ranges of dwarves and you're able to kind of not necessarily corner camp but sit comfortably in one spot and have the enemy come to you, you're a happy dwarf. Let's see who did, you know, good work. The Thanes, yeah, they didn't even quite pay for themselves, but you can't really beat their leadership and tankiness. Um, and their ability just to stand in front of the nobles and say, all right, can you deal with me? Because if you can't, you're going to get shot to pieces by the cannons. Um, dwarf warriors, they just needed to hold, man. Longbeards did okay. A lot of value off the Slayers. That's nice. Yeah, the Grumbling Guard fought to the last man. The last dwarf. Don't say man. That's a grudge too. Uh, and the Rangers did great. They got great value as well. Shooting at white lines and then shooting. Making sure that my opponent's archers did absolutely nothing this game. And then the cannons also bringing the heat. 2100 damage value off of this single cannon here with the, the fewest kills. Probably the one who was getting the best shots on the Nobles. Let's see what the Nobles were doing. I mean, not bad. Not bad. The mobility was great. Yeah, nothing really was able to, to quite pay for itself. I might have gotten in there a little bit earlier with Alario in terms of, like, uh, trying to get her a few kills. She could have been, you know, sitting on some Dwarf Warriors at some point. There's no guarantee I wouldn't have found her, you know, but she has. she's on a horse. She can stay mobile. Um, it's, it's always a temptation to take a Mage Lord. And never engage it. You see that a lot with like Gelt on Quicksilver. You know. Um, he stays above the combat the whole time. Stuff starts going sideways. And opponents then decide to like engage with Gelt. Um, he's not a great melee duelist. But you can usually find something. You know you can find some miners to let him fight. You can find just something to help uh, get him a little bit more value. And then you know if stuff starts going sideways you duck out. It definitely requires more micro. Um, but I think I think my opponent could have done it here. Alarial stayed in like deep reserve uh, until the end, and I wasn't Lord sniping by any means. Um, I could have with triple cannon. If I was my opponent, I might have expected the Lord snipe. Just go train all cannons on Alarial. After two volleys, she's basically done. Yeah, that's just not how I choose to play. But hope you guys enjoyed this this battle. I'm gonna try and bring you guys another goofy battle. But the dwarves are definitely my roots. They're my favorite race in the game. I know people are speculating on what the uh, the upcoming DLC will be. Almost everyone is in for the Beastmen. They have so many bad mechanics in their campaign. They have so many cool units like the Jabber Slythe and the Gorgon um, that they could be using. They have Doom Bulls you could bring in. There's so much there to like recommend them. But the second the second race is up for grabs. People are saying Lizardmen. The Lizardmen still have a few cool things to do. But then they'll have like the most lords in the game some people think that doesn't matter i would much rather see two game one races give the dwarves i don't know exactly what they need campaign wise as, an, as far as an overhaul they need to give them more growth that's for sure um but man sky barges how sick would that be uh engineer lords would be awesome dudes with shotguns um yeah there's so there's so much that i want to see even those golems that are kind of referenced a little bit in the older lore some people say they would hate that. Uh, it would give the dwarves monstrous units. But, I mean, come on. One monstrous unit. One, uh, like... One single entity monstrous unit. I guess you could also... You could do, like, one big one and, like, groups of smaller ones, too. Kind of troll-sized. I don't know. 
I don't know. I love dwarves. I, I would never I would never be mad at seeing them in any DLC capacity. But that's that's it for me today, guys. I'm Brett, channel's Good Talk Gaming, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.